Welcome to this episode of The Aquarist Sedge, a podcast for home aquarists just like you. Learn more about how to keep a thriving aquarium and discover ideas and tips to give your aquarium the edge. And now, over to our host, Arthur Preston. Have you ever forgotten to feed your fish one day and then panicked because you thought you had done them a disservice? Perhaps it was even cruel. Perhaps you had this guilt of neglect how could I possibly have let my animals in my tanks go without any food I think we've all been there at some point but here's the thing fasting can have immense benefits for your fish's health your tank's water quality and your overall aquarium ecosystem and in today's episode we're going to have a look at this concept of fasting your tank is it a good thing what actually happens during that time and, and why a natural rhythm of fasting can be such a good thing for your animals in your aquariums. So let's get into this conversation and uh, let's start looking at a key question. Why is fasting a good thing for your fish? Why is it natural? Well, we've got to go back to fish in the wild and look at their natural feeding rhythms. Most freshwater fish we keep in aquariums originate from environments where food is not consistently available. They could go for hours or even days between meals, depending on their environment, the season they're in, and the position in which they find themselves in the food chain. In our aquariums, we tend to feed once or twice daily, often robotically without fail. But here's the thing, our, our fish are not metabolically equipped for this schedule. They're opt opportunistic feeders. They're adept to eating when food is available, and they know how to survive stretches without it. We can't go put our human calendar, our human timing into our aquariums, even though it's really convenient for us to do so. And when we fast our fish occasionally, we're not depriving them. We're actually mimicking the fluctuations of their natural world. And this helps maintain proper digestive flow, balanced energy use, and hormonal regulation. It's, it's part of the biological realism in your tank's routine. But what's actually going on inside your fish's body during fasting? When fish eat, their digestive system is flooded with enzymes and nutrients. But unlike mammals, many fish do not have stomachs, for example, your goldfish. This means that food travels quickly and can easily overwhelm their short intestinal tracts. And this can lead to bloating, constipation, and swim bladder dysfunction. So fasting gives the digestive tract time to fully empty and reset, and this has several benefits. It reduces the risk of intestinal blockages, it means that there's better nutrient absorption at the next meal, and there's a lower incidence of swim bladder disorder, especially in your fancy goldfish and betas. I guess you could think of it like cleaning out your pipes. You want flow and clearance before more input. Feeling is directly tied to water quality. Every uneaten pellet and every fish bowel movement contributes to the tank's bioload. Fish excrete ammonia through their gills and kidneys, and this ammonia in turn is processed by your beneficial bacteria into nitrite and then nitrate. But always remember that overfeeding accelerates the cycle. To say it again, more feeding means more ammonia, which means more stress in your filter. So by fasting, you reduce ammonia spikes, the accumulation of nitrates, and you can reduce the frequency of water changes. And here's a big one. It reduces algae outbreaks because you're not introducing as many dissolved organics that algae thrive on. Less food in equals less waste out. Less food in equals less waste out, which equals a more stable system. Not all fish are going to benefit equally from fasting, and some should never ever be fasted. So let's look at that. Fish that benefit greatly from fasting will include Goldfish, they're very prone to constipation and buoyancy issues. And so a 24 hour fast twice a week actually does wonders for them. Labyrinth fish, such as betas, often suffer from overfeeding in small tanks. So fasting them every five to six days is recommended. Now your guppies, mollies, your platies, the live bearers, they are very resilient and they're also often overfed. And weekly fasting keeps digestion balanced. Scavengers such as Corridoras and Loaches, they will clean more actively during fasts. And so it actually does your tank and them benefit to have time when they are digging deeper into that substrate. Now, which fish should you not fast? Well, they fall into three categories. Firstly, 
you'll fry your baby fish. They are not designed to fast. They require near constant feeding for optimal development. Your newly acclimated fish. They need nutrition for immune system support as they become acclimatized to your tank. And thirdly, very thin or sick fish because fasting can add to stress in fish that are undernourished. So you need to look at the species that you have in your tank. You need to figure out, is fasting going to be something that will benefit all of my fish, particularly if you have a big community tank? And so you will adjust your fasting schedule by species and age group. Most healthy adult community fish do absolutely fine with one to two fasting days per week. Build it into your schedule. Have a fasting Friday, for example, so you don't forget it's that day on which I'm not going to feed. There are a couple of myths and misconceptions around fasting, so let's have a look at, at four of them. Number one, it's sometimes said that fasting is cruel. No, it's not cruel. It's only cruel if it's applied incorrectly. Done properly, it mimics natural cycles and will reduce stress. Myth number two is that fish will starve after a day. <laughs> That's absolute nonsense. Most healthy fish can go up to a week without food, although that's not actually recommended for routine care. Myth number three is that you need to feed daily to maintain the fish's color and energy. Also not true, energy and pigmentation are often, or most times, influenced by food quality, not the quantity of the food they consume. And myth number four, fasting is a solution for poor water quality not true it's a tool it's not a quick fix you still are going to need good filtration and regular maintenance of your tanks but what if something goes wrong sometimes fasting will reveal deeper problems and this is what you need to look for your fish could be really lethargic after fasting so you want to check for underlying stress low oxygen in the water or poor water parameters it won't be the fasting you could see an increase in aggression now, some species do become more territorial when hungry. So spread the feeding sites or break up line of sight in your tank when you do feed them. What about death or severe illness after a fast? This is not the cause of, the, the fast did not cause this. This would indicate a pre-existing issue. Fasting isn't the culprit, but it has brought the problem to the surface. So let's just remember three things. Find a day on which you're going to fast your tank. Keep it simple, make it easy to remember. I suggest using the Fasting Friday idea, it's easy to remember. It's not a bad idea to fast after a water change. It helps stabilize the system after disruption. And if there's ever been an overfeeding in your tank for whatever reason, fast your fish, it'll reset the system. Now, I want to recap with something I said right in the beginning. Fasting your fish is not neglect. It is not cruel. You are doing your fish a service. It's nature aligned care. It supports digestion, keeps waste levels low, and can even improve your fish behavior. And it might feel strange at first to try skip a feeding, but do it. Start with one fasting day per week, observe your fish and watch what happens. You might be surprised at how much healthier and more vibrant your tank becomes. Folks, if this episode was helpful, please leave a review. It does help us to make the podcast more visible to others. Share the podcast with a fellow fish keeper, particularly if someone has asked you about the issue of fasting their fish or they have been concerned that they may be going to be away for a weekend and they're worried about uh, feeding their fish. Share this episode with them and tell them to take a deep breath and relax. Everything will be fine. If you happen to be listening to this episode and follow The Aquarist Edge on YouTube, please feel free to leave a comment and to subscribe to the channel. And um, all our podcast episodes that go out on the podcast apps are uploaded onto YouTube as well. So feel free to follow us there. Don't forget, you can check out Art's Fish Room for fish food and other um, aquatic supplies. Please go ahead and check that at artsfishroom.coza. Next week's episode, we'll be looking at how filter bubbles may actually reduce oxygen in your tank. You don't want to miss that one. Also want to let you know that I will be visiting the Eastern Cape Aquatic or Aquarium Expo at the end of this month, that's May 2025. And um, I will be wearing a shirt that has the Arts Fisherman logo and the Aquarius Edge podcast information on it. Please, if you are one of the folk who will be attending that um, expo as well, please make a point of coming to say hi. 
I will have a microphone. I would like to do some interviews with people. So by all means, if you see me walking around, checking out the exhibits, listening to some of the talks, please come along, introduce yourself, let's connect, and um, possibly you'll find yourself featured on an episode in the future. Folks, keep learning, keep discovering, and keep enjoying this amazing hobby. I will see you on the next episode. Bye for now. That's it for this episode of The Aquarius Sedge. Please consider subscribing to this podcast so that you don't miss further episodes. We would love it if you would also rate and review the podcast as this helps make it visible to others. Until next time, keep learning and discovering and keep finding your Aquarius Sedge in this captivating and fascinating hobby.